Diego Rivera would live in Paris from 1911 to 1919 and travel to Italy to study Renaissance frescoes. He's going to be a staunch Marxist, and this is going to be important because he strove to develop an art that served his people's needs. Towards the end, inspired like uh, Orozco by ancient murals in his homeland, he sought to create a national Mexican style focused on Mexico's history and also incorporating a popular, generally accessible aesthetic in keeping with the socialist spirit of the Mexican Revolution. Now, he is going to create a number of large murals in public buildings, among them a series lining the staircase of the National Palace in Mexico City. And we're going to see that here. And you get a sense of the scale of what we're looking at. In it, uh, what we're going to see is this specific piece known as ancient Mexico. And here we see a representation of the conflicts between the indigenous people and the Spanish colonizers. Riviera includes portraits of important figures in Mexican history, especially those involved in the struggle for Mexican independence. Although the composition is complex, the simple shapes and large areas of bold color make the story easy to read. And what we see as we start breaking it down is a lot of indigenous imagery. For example, this idea of the fire serpent, uh, this coming from the Aztec, uh, the fire serpent sometimes rising from the volcanoes that they would see in the distance from Tenochtitlan or what is today Mexico City. We see a depiction of here an eagle warrior, although they're jaguar warriors as well in the history of the Aztec people. Here we see the people fighting against the Spanish and we get that sense of incredible peace and then incredible struggle of the strife of what's going on. Now, let me explain a little more of what's going on because for the indigenous population, for the Aztec at the time, and I'll use the Aztec just as a broad term here, what's happening is they're fighting for their livelihood. It becomes obvious fairly early on what the Spanish are going to do, that they're going to start wiping out native culture. They start doing this on the way to Mexico City or what is today Mexico City. They will take these temples and they will wipe out the cellas. They will try and convert the people almost immediately. And this conversion is not one that is smooth. It is not one that is voluntary by any means. What we have is this incredible society that had developed amongst the Aztec. And of course, they developed on the backs of Teotihuacan, on the back of the Mayans, on the back of the uh, Olmec, on the back of the Zapotec, and all of these other groups. And so what Rivera is doing is he's trying to capture what that was like, what that struggle was like. This becomes important because it becomes... Uh, a stand-in for the Mexican Revolution as it happens around the people. It reminds them why they had to fight back. Because they needed to develop this sense of identity. At the point that he's creating this piece, they're trying to develop that identity, not just in the terms that we see from Kahlo on a personal level, but also from a societal level. What will that mean? Will they become Aztec? Will they become European? Will they become socialist or capitalist? What path are they going to take? And so Rivera is trying to shape that debate and move them in a specific direction based on his socialist views. 